The first thing I want to show you is the all of the equipment, so the supplies and the tools that I use to build my system. So let's go take a look. Okay, this table contains all the tools that I need to build the system. First I got some work gloves, keep the hands nice, hammer, knife, measuring tape, Sandpaper. This was a big sheet of sandpaper and I just cut squares off when I need them for something. Very cheap, very handy sandpaper. Some kind of a wrench. Not so necessary. You could skip the wrench. Um, a hand saw. This was a super cheap. It's called craft saw. It was maybe five dollars. I just cut everything by hand because there aren't very many cuts and uh, this is my super cheap drill. This was about $15. Here's the drill bits that came with it. Um, I've been using mostly the 4 millimeter drill bit. That's it, and a pair of scissors. That'll build you everything you need. Okay, now for the aquarium supplies. I got an air pump. This is to aerate the water in the fish tank. They need oxygen in the water for the fish to live, or they won't be living very long. Uh, it's got a really short cord, so um, I'm also going to buy an extension cord for this. Now, here you can see it's got two air hose connections. So, I had to buy two air hoses standard fittings. I got two of these. Here's the other one. And on the end of the air hose um, you need, well you don't need it but it's a good idea, the air stones. Okay. Here's, here's the full hookup here. Tube is hooked up to the air stone. Basically the air blows through the tube and then goes into the air and this is very porous and so then the air bubbles leak out in various places because um, it's all about the surface area of the bubbles. You want more tiny bubbles rather than a few large bubbles of air because the surface area is of the air bubbles is how the oxygen will go into the water and it'll also take the bad things out of the water. So you want um, as much bubble surface area as you can get in there so the air stones help with that. Uh, it's very important that your air pumps running all the time. According to the Murray Hallam video, uh, if your air pump fails, you have a power outage or something like that, or it breaks down, um, in under an hour you could have dead fish. So I might be getting actually a second air pump to back this up. Okay, welcome to my spare bedroom. This is where I'm going to be doing my aquaponic system. It's indoors. Very small bedroom. Fairly small window. I will be uh, removing those curtains to get more sunlight in here. So they're covering up just a bit. And uh, in the colder months I may be removing also the screen from the window so I get a little bit more light in. And I'm also going to clean the windows they have any dirt on them get all that cleaned up but first most important thing I guess is the uh, the tanks or the tubs or the grow beds whatever you want to call them um, I got two they're each 100 liters you for home systems it's good to have a one-to-one -one match this is going to be a hundred liter fish tank and this one's going to be a hundred liter grow bed so they're both the same. Tank, fish tank, and grow bed size is the same. One to one ratio is pretty good or standard from what I've uh, learned on the from my research. So this is going to be the fish tank, 100 liters. Um, from my research I've gathered that about 10 liters of water you can put one fish. Uh, obviously that changes when the fish grow. Ten tiny fish in a hundred liters or ten big fish in a hundred liters is 
you know, different nutrient outputs and all sorts of different things, but that's a ratio that I've heard from Murray Hallam on his videos. Now, uh, I went just went to the home center and got this, both of these tanks, they were about 30 bucks each. Um, I'm pretty sure they're food grade. Everything's got to be food grade, but it's pretty difficult for me in Japan to figure that out. But uh, these tanks um, at the store, they were used, or they're they were pictured with uh, storage of vegetables and fish and seafood products on ice or whatnot. So I'm pretty sure it's food grade. Um, a nice aspect of this is it's got a drain plug already built in. So that's real handy. Um, I also bought A wheeled cart. Wheeled cart. Um, now I got that so that my system can move. It's very heavy. This cart's rated for 100 kilograms, which is about the weight of my fish tank. That'll be handy to move things around in case I need to clean, if I have any leaks or if I need to adjust uh, seasonally for the different sun tracking or anything. So that's good. That sits on there perfectly and it's mobile because it's on the wheeled cart. Uh, wheeled cart cost me about 20 bucks. I could have built it myself for about the same price but this one was pretty good and I didn't have to do any work. Now here's the grow bed. I'm gonna planning to have them sit together like that, right in front of the window, one on top of the other. But uh, obviously that's not very stable. The top one, the vegetable grow bed, could fall down quite easily. So I'm gonna build a wooden platform like that. And I'm also going to put that wooden platform on wheels so that it's independently mobile from the bottom bed. So the system I'm going to be building is what I call a VOP system. There's a CHOP system which is a constant height one pump, but um, we're not going to be having a constant height in the bottom bed which is the fish tank we're going to be have a variable height variable height one pump VOP system don't know I just kind of made up that term don't know if it's a real term but basically water is going to be pumping up to the grow bed constantly at a slow rate grow bed is going to fill up with water and then drain out quickly to the uh, fish tank below so the fish tanks always going to have a level changing of I'm guessing somewhere in the 10 to 20 liter range of change. So that fish tank will be going up and down constantly. Variable height, one pump, uh, one pump and one aerator. 